Okay, we're over here on the bench. I've got the three jawed chuck and we're gonna go ahead and set the rotor up on this and then place it onto the lathe and uh, tighten it down. <laughs> These jaws are worm gear driven, so when you turn the drive gear here, the jaws will open and close around the inner diameter of your workpiece. Secure. Alright, let's slide this guy on. You know, this is probably the fourth rule of the internet. Don't uh, operate a lathe and let people see you. So I'm certain there's a hundred million different ways to do this. And this just so happens to be my way. Okay, let's inspect our cutting bits to make sure that they have adequate clearance to move past the rotor. And we'd like for them to be aligned on this plane here, which this one is a little farther forward. I'm gonna back that off until it's even. There we go. So because the center line sort of moved that way some, once I retracted and extended these cutters, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the rotor in so it's centered with the, uh, the cutting head. Unclick these. Wow, that's freaking tight. What is this? Why? If you want something messed up, let other people use it. There we go. That looks good. And we'll turn it in a little closer. It's not going. There we go. That looks good. Looks good. Okay. Put the vibration dampener on. Come here. It's a very large rubber band with some lead weights in it. Maybe they're steel. Either way, this is designed to absorb vibrations so they don't translate through the workpiece and uh, cause ugly cuts. Okay, now that we're all set up, powered on, I'm gonna run the cutting head in towards the base and we'll do a scratch cut, a very, very light cut on both sides. And we're looking for our calibration point. I'm slowly turning the dial in as I uh, advance until it makes contact with the rotor. I'm doing the same on the inboard side. See right here, I'm operating the knob. And it has made contact. Now I want to go into the rust area, the spot where the pad never makes contact. So this point is going to be our zero mark, so let's go ahead and lock down both of the cutting bits. And we're going to center our dial to zero. This is our baseline cut. Zero and zero. Put the trans in high gear, and the lathe will do the work for us. It's just going to slowly run this cutting head out until it reaches the end, and we will review the cut at that point. This guy right here, and this guy. Oh, the job inside of God on our last day. <laughs> he should run for president. Ramble, ramble, there's Pete, blah de blah blah. Alright, well, so anyway, you can clearly see that there is in fact some run out. 
the uh, cutting bit only made contact with a portion of the rotor. You can't say that, can't say what? <laughs> okay, moving around to the inboard side, we see a similar pattern where it made a cut at about 25% of the rotor, but it did not make the cut at the remainder. So we're gonna do another pass, obviously, same speed. And we're going to run both of the cutting bits inwards and cut a little bit deeper this time. However, we're not gonna go too deep. Just a couple thousand on each pass, maybe just 1,000. Watching the fingers. Click. Did about two thou on each side. Go ahead, put it back in the gear. Up and back. Beautiful. Back in neutral. Power it down. Yeah. Look what we've got going on here. The entirety of the old surface has been cut away, but we're not done. We have to do one more pass in slower motion and produce a finish cut. Because this is very rough and it's full of peaks and valleys. We want to have that super duper smooth and cut out all of those peaks. All right, power back up. Run our cutter back in. We're gonna go in one more notch. Okay. And again, one notch on this side. Well, maybe a notch and a quarter. I like to push it. Next. And slow speed. It's forward. time and during the slow cut it's always a good idea to walk away and do something else all right we're good all right back in neutral shut it down Nice and smooth, looks good. Happy with this. And let's just clean this off a little bit. Nice, shiny. All right, one down, three, go. Bad noise. All right, let's transfer the chuck to the other rotor and repeat. I've also come to conclude that this rotor is different than this rotor. 
one of these has been painted and the other one has not. There it is. Good as new, almost good as new. All right, second one coming in. Now I'm gonna adjust these just so they barely make contact with the spindle or the shaft rather just to ensure that it's as centered as possible hand tight a little bit more hand tight and we'll go ahead and tighten up the inboard jaws as well now that it's set flush kick give it a spin my icrometer says there's no run out that's the point where you guys yell at me fire it up check the run out again that's negative. Well, this sucks. Look, my rubber band vibration dampener broke, so I'm going to have to do something slightly different. I'll use the rubber band that is for uh, drum brakes. I've ordered another one, but that's not going to be here for a while. Don't have time for that. I know, it, this is like the second time in like a year. What does that even mean? That's not gonna work! You can do it, Bernie man! I know I can. And I will. Yeah, whatever. Just go. Stay there. This is gonna work. It's gonna work. Take a while. Ah, I put it on slow speed and done. All right, high speed. It's still gonna take a while, so I'm gonna head back over to the car and uh, throw the other rotor back onto the driver's front. And we'll just listen. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We'll just listen for that rotor to stop making rotor scratchy noises. And uh, when it stops making noises, that's when it is done, and we can set it up for another path. <laughs> 